Hey guys, today we are going to talk about eight cards that are more valuable than you would have expected. And we will start off with Bounty Hunter from Tempest. This is a card that is relatively old and unlike many of its other cards, it actually went down in price. It does see some play in the Vampire decks. It's not bad. It's decent in that those type of builds, but it's, is it worth $6? Pretty aggressive price on it. I don't think it is, and it will trend down. This is the second time I've seen it actually go up in price, so it is trending up. And it's just kind of meant to me, if you have Tempest bulk, then this is you will have a lot of copies of this. I have to dig, because Tempest was one of these sets I have most of in bulk. I'm not sure how that came to be. But Tempest and Alliance, those are the two sets that I just accumulate so much of. Next, Cable Coffers, or Cabal, <laughs> Cabal Coffers. So Cabal Coffers is a $22 Uncommon. It is from Torment. And I remember these being, these were always considered very good. But they were like 5 bucks or $2 when they were in Standard. Great card in ED8s. ED8s has done some fantastic stuff to lands in particular, in particular black lands. There's another black land not on this list, on the reserve list. I want to take a little bit brief moment to talk about. I currently own one copy of this land. It's called Lake of the Dead. It's a great card. Interesting Probably going to be very interesting to see its price point because out of all the cards that are spiking, the old cards that are spiking, Lake of the Dead has not yet. And that doesn't make sense to me given what else is going up in price. Next, Orgbog, Tomb of Yagmoth. There is a reprinted version of this one in one of the core sets. But the Planar Chaos version is $18 and a $61 foil. Beautiful card. Uh, definitely when you talk about lands and utility lands in EDH, this is only upside, right? It's only upside because it itself will become a swamp and over a... So, I mean, you cannot tutor for it, right? But other than that, you're good to go. Definitely something that you should keep an eye on. And I like the concept of core sets. I'm glad that we're getting back to it because... Even if a card is reprinted in a standard core set, it can still eventually be worth a lot of money just because of the demand. Everyone knew this card was good. And after the reprint, it tanked in price to $10, and now it's kind of rebounded. Fantastic card in EDH. Next, Urza's Incubator. If you had made this call when it was about 5 bucks, and you saw this, you could have made it even after you saw the and knew that it was tribal because this spike was recent. A lot of people expected it to be reprinted and that is why it was $5. But now we know that it is not and it is $20. That's insane to me. But it's a great card. It is the card you need in Commander for tribal decks. Fantastic build. I mean, it is a card that slots in anywhere because it's an artifact. Gets you manner accelerating quite quickly and even tempo. It helps you in tempo because playing multiple creatures in the same turn turn is turns out to be very good. Would have been great as a spec if you made it. I don't know how many people actually made it though. Uh, Vengevine is the next card I want to take a moment. This has spiked from the previous low of 10 and it looks like it's going to break $30 soon. That is very good for this card. It's always been kind of fringe playable in Modern. Uh, it's always been in the Dreads decks. It's always been in uh, various various decks that need Graveyard. And I've always felt that the weakness was you needed to get more of them. You know, needed more consistency. And this is not really a win mechanic. But milling, self-milling is uh, super important right now. And it's something that I feel like will only continue in casual. It, this card has tremendous casual appeal and it's not something that I feel like will go down too much in price. It's very unique, difficult to reprint. Here's what's interesting. Iconic Masters 
it's such a broad name, right? So if you name something Modern Masters, you assume that it's in Modern, and therefore any Legacy cards or non-Modern cards won't want to be in the set. And if you call it Eternal Masters, you would assume, okay, we're going to go heavy into the Legacy formats. But Iconic Masters is very... It kind of dampens, like, I don't know what to expect. Anything could be Iconic, right? Next, Land Tax. I did not realize this card has snuck up to $20 again. It's not on the reserve list. Clearly from, you know, actually four for distant. Are there any four for distant cards on the reserve list? I'm assuming not. I'm assuming it is revised and mm, the, the dark, the dark action alliance. No, a four for distant could, it could be on the reserve list, right? Because you have, uh, you have cards even on alliance on the reserve list, right? Pretty sure alliance. Yeah, I just talked about one, Lake of the Dead. So, land, land tax, very good. Savage Beating. There's a lot of great bulk cards still out there, like Savage Beating, that are just, very, will take some time. It'll take some time to be accepted. It'll take some time to be part of the Commander 100. What you need to look at is you just need, you, there's two strategies, right? You can either buy a ton of bulk, and that's kind of what I did. And eventually, things will just start to spike for no reason, and you'll be good. Or you can buy unique bulk cards and really bet your house on one of these. Because Savage Beating, I can tell you, you probably could accumulated 200 of these from RTR until Contra Tarkir for $2 or less. And now it's a $6 card, so I'm assuming it buys list is at $3. 50%. That's a pretty good margin. All right, so let's talk about something that has really inspired, that has done something incredibly interesting, Mana Echoes. This card in Onslaught was just terrible. It was terrible. I don't know any decks that played it. I didn't play it. I didn't personally like it. I kept, this, this is one of the cards that you keep opening, and you're like, no, I don't want to open anymore. Mana Echoes as a non-foil is $26. As a foil, it is $78. It is great for creature types, which is the new commander decks. Now, is there a set like Legions or that really promotes Scourge, that really promotes Tribal? Yes. You need to buy those Tribal cards now before it's too late. Mana Echoes is exactly what it looks like. It's a tribal card that you, that you when you have more and more creatures, it gets better and better. Anyway, that is it. Leave me a comment below. Bye, guys.